How much has a low carb or a keto diet affected my cycling? I'm now in week six of my keto diet. I've lost 20 pounds, really happy with that. So it's working in terms of the weight loss, but I did a lot of reading when I went into this diet online about people's experiences. And they say that essentially the story is you lose a lot of top end power, but at a lower power, you can just go for as long as you want. Don't necessarily even need to eat. You can just carry on burning the fat stores that you've got uh, and carry on for hours. I'm not necessarily sure that's what I've experienced recently in my races. I feel very, very strong. I've been at the, you know, in and amongst the race in the elimination race a couple of weeks ago. And I've been able to keep up with other categories in our T2.5 races as well. So I thought I'd try and put some numbers on that. And what's the best way to do that than an FTP test? I've done an FTP test twice recently in the last year. First one was in July last year, and that was a 242 FTP, 242 watts FTP. And then in November, I got a 243 watts FTP. So it'd be interesting to see if the recent increases I've seen in rides and races. So on the RGT elimination race, it popped up afterwards to say my um, FTP was 266. I'd like to see if I can replicate that in a proper FTP test. The FTP test that I use is the Zwift ramp FTP test, where essentially it just steps up over time until you can't go any further. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail as I go through the ride. But uh, I thought that would put some numbers around where I was before and where maybe I am now and see how much it's affected me on the bike. So let's jump over to the ride uh, and we'll talk through it. Okay then, so we're over on Zwift and in the list of training workouts and plans, you can see the little FTP test ones. Go in there and do the ramp test. You can see the date, 16th to the 11th was the last time that I did that one. I'm not quite sure what the difference between the ramp test and the ramp test light is, but I select the ramp test, uh, eventually select the ramp test, and uh, I'm a little bit confused here because I never realized that Zwift, you can see on the right hand side, it's got me at a, an FTP of 267. And you can see the surprise on my face because I don't ever remember seeing a pop-up to say that it had gone up that high. Obviously I'd had uh, the pop-up on the elimination race a little while before for uh, 266 watts. So, you know, it doesn't feel too silly, but click it on workout. And this is new as well. You can actually select a course to do it. I've not done, since the new menu's been introduced into Zwift, I've not actually used it to do workouts and training plans. So I just selected the Sander Sequoias, just a nice easy flat route for this one. Not that it makes any difference when you're using erg mode in a ramp test, but here we go then. So you get a five minute free ride. Um, I have already done a bit of a, I think it was about a 10 minute warm up with one of the D category pace partners prior to this ride. So I've already done a little bit of a warm up anyway. Um, and then it steps up in one minute interval, starting at hundred Watts by 20 Watts, uh, every minute. And the idea of this is you just keep going until you can't go anymore. Uh, and on the screen, obviously Swift is telling you what you need to do. You can make an accurate estimate of your FTP, uh, so that it looks like it goes on for 42 and a half minutes at this stage, but it doesn't cause it just stops when you can't go any longer uh and it is as it says on the screen an effort until exhaustion exhaustion so uh, every pedal stroke counts every second you can go further you can get your ftp higher basically and this was a good reminder to pop up about the 80 to 95 rpm something that i think i've improved on actually over time is my ability to ride at a higher cadence so it's good that it pops up on the screen to to remain at about 80 to 95, which is usually in the range that I cycle in with anyway. Uh, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And it did just say that to, just as a reminder, this is a seated test. It can become sort of natural when things get hard to sort of jump out of the saddle uh, and stand up a little bit just to, to crunch out some extra watts. But um, yeah, it's just reminded you that you have to stay seated for this. And obviously... My trainer, I'm in erg mode on this, uh, and it does do the resistance changes itself. So all I have to do is focus on the keeping my pedal strokes going basically and, and carrying on throughout the ride. Uh, I did start out at a slightly slower cadence and I built up to it towards when the, um, when the ride starts. But again, as it says on the screen, if you don't have a trainer with erg mode, 
you have to obviously change your gears as you go to try and get the watts that are required on the screen. So this is an interesting thing. Your FTP is based only on your best one minute within the test. So that it's an interesting thing because everything you've done before that is kind of meaningless. So the build up that you've you've put into getting from 120, 140, 160, all that's doing is exhausting your muscles. It's not counting towards your FTP score at all. Okay, so I'm into the last minute of the, the free ride. And the messages on the screen are basically saying that it gets hard very quickly. And, and until that point, it's actually quite easy. And that is so true. If you've ever tried doing an FTP test, you'll keep going and thinking, this is a breeze, this is a breeze. And then all of a sudden you'll hit a point that it will just be too hard to carry on. And you think, okay, I've gone from easy to very difficult, very quickly. And that should happen somewhere between the 10 and 20 minute mark. If you guess if you've got your FTP set correctly, you know, near enough where you need it to be at the start. Uh, but as it says, the last three to five minutes is what really counts. That's where you've got to you bury yourself as much as you can uh, and and get as many watts out of your legs as you can. I'm not sure what that note means. You'll not be able to add or subtract time from your test. I don't really understand that. But uh, as we've gone through, you'll see that my cadence has increased slightly now. This is actually going to drop down. I was riding about 150 watts just in that, that free ride portion. And you see it's dropped right down to 100 watts. And it's taken my trainer a little bit of time to adjust to that. I noticed it at the time of riding that it, it, all of these jumps, it kind of took a little while to, to change to the resistance changes, but I guess it's still measuring the watts that you're putting out. So it's, it's not going to affect the FTP calculation at the end. And you get your little average below the watts. It tells you what your watts average for the ride are. And you can see them increasing. I think that's like a 60 second average, just like your FTP calculation takes into account. So you can just see it increasing over time. And usually by the end of the time you get to the end of that minute, your average watts is around what you're aiming at. So you'll see in a minute, it's, it's pretty much on 100 watts as I get to the end of the first minute. So into the second minute, again, this is really quite easy riding. It's just that I was riding 150 watts before even starting the test. So this is quite nice and easy on my legs but you can see it's taken a little while for my trainer to react and I noticed it was more at the lower watts that it took longer to react than it was at the higher watts but uh, yeah not too bad so far still just trying to keep that cadence where it needs to be so just stepped up to 160 watts the heart rate is is starting to steadily climb now at 140 I must admit my heart rate was higher I was quite nervous before starting the test it's weird that, that can, that it can do that to you and I found that my heart rate was slightly higher than what it would be in a normal you know casual ride um, and yeah on the screen the test will go from I'm fine to I'm toast pretty quickly that certainly rings true for the test like this I've done before still trying to stick to the uh, the cadence I'm in the high 80s for most of this I think from memory 20 seconds left before we step up to the the 180 mark and I think the reason I chose a flat route is I noticed I've done it on a hill before and it can play with your mind slightly because you're expecting more resistance going up a hill. And I just felt that doing it on a flat route would probably be slightly better just to uh, to take that, that mental and mind factor away from it. You see my heart rate has now climbed up to 149 and we're aiming for the 180 watts. So it's going to start, you know, feeling the effect of a slightly higher watt, but obviously the cumulative effort of the ride for the few minutes before. Uh, and yeah, as confirmed on the screen, your heart rate should be drifting steadily upwards. And the reminder it gave there of keeping your, your breathing steady was perfect timing because I, I hadn't really thought about it up to that point. And I, from then on, I just made sure that I was breathing consistently uh, trying to get you know air into my lungs so I don't burn out too quickly as often I guess at the lower at the lower watts you can kind of just casually ride along and not think about it and and cause yourself some issues later on that you can't catch up with I suppose but uh, already we're about to step up to the 200s and you can see how quick this is it's a, been just ticking over the 10 minutes we're up to the 200 watts already and this is where it'll start to 
slightly ramp up a bit in difficulty heart rate will continue to go up you see i'm <laughs> just undoing my the top of my uh, shirt there to try and get some to cool down a little bit i think just about now is where some awesome banging music came on i was listening to the estate of trance podcast yeah there i go and a brilliant track came on that just made me want to dance uh, which was awesome timing because when you're in the middle of something like this you need something else to give you so, so that little something extra it's probably not good for you know the total watts i'm probably wasting energy here but uh, it definitely helps get you through those moments where you're starting to struggle a bit although i'm not necessarily struggling at this point we're just heading up to the 220 watt marker uh, you can see the steady incline over time at the bottom we're just heading into sort of green zone efforts now and for those of you who watch my my channel normally you'll know that my power output is very spiky especially in races it's something i need to work on so obviously erg mode really helps to keep that a very smooth and gradual change over time but it's something that i'm not particularly good at when i'm riding on my own and zwift actually now reminding to keep the smoothness there try and keep as smooth as possible to minimize the spikes um, probably for lots of reasons i guess i think that you don't want to be pushing against a trainer that is trying to increase resistance every now and again uh, and pushing back on your legs to try and hit the watts output that you need to give so try and keep it as smooth as possible which i'm trying to do keeping my cadence at around the 90 mark it's fluctuating slightly heart rate's just ticked over 160 we're just about to head over to the 240 so this is the point i think it's going to start getting a little bit more difficult and you'll probably start to see a little bit more of a strain on my face and actually the message come up saying yeah you start the tunnel should be starting to darken a bit keep your hands loose and on the bars and i, I did the same thing here that's another what i like about these messages is they make you really think i realized i was quite stiff my my neck i was holding myself quite firmly and I needed to just loosen up a little bit. And there's moments I started actually moving my, my head and my neck around just to kind of loosen that grip on the bike. And we've just now stepped up to 260, which is into my yellow zone, 170 beats per minute heart rate. Uh, and this is the point where you're going to start feeling it. I start, you can see me just trying to regulate my breathing, trying to just breathe through it, keep my legs going. Uh, and yeah, every other 10, even another 10 seconds hanging on matters because it makes a massive difference. You know, as a, out of an average of 60 seconds, another 10 seconds can increase your FTP by a good few watts, a good couple of watts. So it's, it's important to keep going for as long as you can. And uh, yeah, hitting t t 172 heart rate now, still trying to keep my cadence. I'm focusing on the cadence actually. The, as we've said a minute ago sort of the tunnel darkens you do try and find that one or two things to focus on and mine was just the cadence at this point just keeping my eye on it because i know that if i can keep that up then i should be able to go as far as possible once you once that lowers it's more of a grind and i, I find it more difficult um and it's dropping it's dropped a little bit here but I, you see me pushing back up you sort of jump up to 92 and actually this does feel a little bit lower than what I'd normally ride at cadence wise, maybe. Maybe I need to focus more on that and see what it is normally. But uh, and Zwift suggesting to do this as a workout. I think I might be giving that one a miss. But uh, you can see this is just ticking over into orange zone effort now on the on the graph at the bottom and half rate heart rate up to 174. So uh, this is starting and you see on my face, I'm just starting to puff a little bit here trying to keep the re the breathing going knowing that we've got the 300 watt marker coming up as we just go through that now this is where it starts to get difficult i'm starting to feel it a little bit more pain in my expression just keeping those legs moving still keeping a relatively good cadence you can see me pushing to speed up every now and again where it jumps up heart rate up to 175 and then zwift making the point just narrow your focus cadence and power uh, and keep going and I did continually drink throughout this ride to just I keep I do get being on keto I do get a very dry mouth uh, and I like to keep making sure that I'm hydrated throughout so taking a quick drink as much as I can do that whilst trying to breathe in a sensible way we just 
I mean, this, I mean, I'm talking now, and this is how quickly you jump through the stages. There's only 10 seconds left of this 300 watt. And uh, heart rate's still up relatively high, and we're going to step up now to 320 watts. Um, and this is really where I start to, I do start to feel it. Uh, and the heart rate will probably jump up along with it now, a little bit higher. I mean, there's not much room left in my heart rate here, but uh, I'm going to keep going for as long as I can. And that message that's come up, just focus on driving the pedals. Yeah, that's exactly the point you get to. You need to just focus on one thing. Uh, forget about everything else. It's funny how, it, as I said, it goes from easy. You know, 240, I could cycle quite happily along at for a period of time. But the more you, you the, the fatigue that's in your legs and then stepping up continually, it does build up on you so quickly and quite unexpectedly, actually, because it just suddenly gets really hard. You see the pain on my face now? We stepped up to 340, my heart rate's up at 181, and I'm just trying. I'm keeping my eye on that cadence. How long can I keep that cadence going for? And it's dropping. You can see it's dropping into the 70s now, 73, 66, <laughs> 50s, 40s, and yeah, I'm done. I, that was quite a painful moment to go through, and it's amazing, as I said, how you just suddenly have to stop. The cadence dropped very, very quickly. And, and that's what's happened. And you can see now the disappointment in my face. The FTP was 243, which is the same as essentially it was on the previous two tests of the same this same variety that I've done before. And uh, yeah, I, in a way that disappoints me because that's different to what I've been getting in the races. But we'll talk in a minute about how I think, why I think that might be. But uh, yeah, after, after you finish the uh, the main part, you then it automatically kicks into a 75 watt cooldown uh, or a 10 minute cooldown, which I did carry on to uh, to complete. I think, uh, to be honest, I think I did about six minutes of it. <laughs> I just wanted to get off the bike at that point, but my heart rate's coming back down. And uh, yeah, disappointing that it's shown the same as before, but I think there's reasons for that and we'll discuss that in a sec. I'm not gonna lie. I was quite disappointed to see that the FTP wasn't higher than that, especially given recent race results and pop-up messages that I've had to say that it should be higher. Oh, again, see you jump out this time. And I think there's probably a couple of reasons for that. If you take the race on last Thursday as an example, you can see my power at the bottom. And I mentioned before that my power during especially races is very, very spiky. That's a symptom of actually being in the race and trying to keep up with people and things. But you can see a lot of red spikes in this particular race. But what I'd say is those red spikes are a lot closer together than they used to be. I feel I am recovering from harder efforts a lot quicker, which means that I can go for another harder effort again sooner, therefore obviously raising my average over a period of time. But the breaks where they do drop down is giving my legs a chance to rest. And even if it's for a split second, that's what my legs are used to. An FTP test, you can't do that. It's it, There's endurance built into it. You've got the erg mode on the trainer and it's staying constant. So I think that is possibly why I'm getting the higher levels of watts in races. Obviously, there's the race element to it as well. You're trying to keep up with groups around you, trying to pick, keep up with breakaways, all of that sort of stuff, which all happened in that race on Thursday night. So I think that's possibly part of the explanation. But also, if I bring up my Strava fitness and freshness graph that you get on there, you can see clearly at the moment I am... I mean, it gives you a number. I don't know what that number really means, but it gives you a relative number. My number at the moment is 35. And you can see that actually in, in January, well, February, March time, my general fitness as calculated by this graph was a lot higher. It dropped off in March when I got COVID, came up a bit back in April. And then I had that break that I needed to just get away from everything, including the bike. Didn't really like ride a lot. And it's kind of dropped down, started to build back over the last couple of weeks. And I don't think, if you look at what was happening in February, we had the tour of, was it the tour of Watopia or the tour of Zwift, one of the two. 
and we were doing our tour of Yorkshire races as well as part of the T2.5 club. And I genuinely think I was doing longer riders, rides back then and my, my general fitness was higher. A lot of the riding I've been doing recently has been the hour long rides that we do, the races or, or the rides, uh, the group rides. And you can see that it's obviously increasing at a slower rate on the graph. So I think that's another thing. I think I'm probably used to doing the shorter, sharper efforts and not the longer ones. And I think that could be the answer. I think the FTP number is lower in the FTP, more endurance based test than it is in the races that I've been getting and getting the other results on. So I think, what's the answer to the question? If you look at the raw power numbers, I was expecting them to go down. And I think given the last few weeks and despite the FTP test being slightly lower, I am performing better in races now than I ever have done. I'm recovering quicker, pushing harder. So I don't think keto has affected my cycling at all. If anything, maybe it's improved it a bit. I don't know. I'm getting other benefits from the keto diet, definitely. I'm getting weight loss, obviously, but I'm also sleeping so much better. I'm waking up in the morning and I'm still in such a deep sleep. It's taking me a little while to kind of come around and wake up. I, before doing the keto, I, I'd be awake, tossing and turning most of the night. So I think there's other benefits that I'm having from it. I think the test needs to be, what is my endurance? How is my longer riding being affected by it? Because I've not done a longer ride since being on keto. I have no idea whether I can do it without eating food, etc., or not. So I think we've answered part one. I think the raw power, it was expected to go down and it hasn't. But what's happened to my endurance? We will test that at a later date on another video. Um, we do have T2.5 rides. If you're new to the channel for this video, we do do our regular Target 2.5 rides. Uh, as on a mixture of platforms. We do on Tuesday night, Thursday on Sat and Saturday, we run rides on Zwift. Tuesday and Saturday are group rides, Saturday being a banded ride. And then we do a race on a Thursday night at 6.30 UK time. And every other, well, the first and third, first and third Sunday of the month, we go hop over to the RGT platform and do an elimination rate race on a Sunday night. If you're interested in joining any of those rides, all the information will be in the description below. Uh, do subscribe to the channel if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button and all that, and I will see you on the next one.